this particular map has been set up as a literacy map with all the different assessments that we are doing at the school. Now, the assessments at the school have already been set up on Grade Expert for all your databases. That was part of the initial setup process. You can, over and above that, create your own assessments, create your own maps, and record your own information that may be outside that list of uh, mandated assessments like PAT, NAPLAN, ATE DART. So what we're looking at here, this is a bit of a Victorian centric one, but the curriculum is close to the Australian curriculum and you can see that we've got the first three English strands, reading and viewing, writing, speaking and listening, in this example for 2018 semester one. And that's been set to view only. Teachers can't make any changes to the data they've entered last semester because we turn off that feature in this particular map. And what we've got next to it is the ability to see an area where we're putting in their outcomes for the end of the subsequent semester. So this is one of the really useful parts of Grade Expert reporting is that you can see last semester's comments, last semester's ATE results that you gave the student. You can even go back two, three, four, five semesters if you wanted to see their progress over time. But having the ability to look at old data from those students even from years before makes these maps really powerful because you can set up almost any look or any view to the map that you want. And we've got a number of pages in this map. There we've got our PM benchmark levels that we can put in. We can just type that straight into the map, for example. At semester one and semester two, we have the ability in our maps to put comments in. And this is something that perhaps isn't being used as much as it could be. When teachers are putting in test outcomes, PM levels, Lexile levels, Torch, uh, Fontes and Pinnell, often, the result on its own doesn't give the full picture. So the ability in a student map alongside the result that you're giving to that student for that uh, level, it might just be a PM level for example, you can then also set it up to type comments in as much information as you want against each result. So you can say, well they struggled with this level so I put them down to one level before, then they managed fine. And that comment stays with the student with that result forever. So teachers in subsequent years can see those comments and perhaps get a clearer picture of that student's abilities. Well the comments are stored along with the results so in this case it's a 2018 semester one result but this comment is for 2018 term three. So there's no time and date it's a date um, period that correlates to the test result. So for example if you have a PM level for 29, uh, 2020 semester one or term one the comment would also be linked to the 2020 semester one PM result. The comments in the maps are meant to be attached to a result to give more context around it for future viewing. You can see we've got our PAT reading data there. In this case it's just the stay nines that are color coded over here and we're going to look at color coding in our next session. And we also have semester one and semester two data on the same map. Now many of you might just be using 2020 maps or 2019 maps but it's really useful from a teacher's perspective to be able to see some historical data which is why we would put in additional years or prior years data.